welcome everyone. Last one. Um, glad you could make it. Um, so we're going to be talking uh, today about uh, two things together, and we're going to go a little bit old school. It's multi-channel donor development. So the multi-channel is the communications channel mainly, and donor development is trying to um, take donors who might be small donors and then um, help move them up the um, pyramid, the donor pyramid. Um, as people come in, I just wanted to um, ask anyone here uh, uh, work in development, fundraising and development? Okay. How many of you provide advice to um, donor development uh, types around what they can do with CIVI-CRM for donation management? Okay. And then some of you are more on the software development side rather than the <laughs> fundraising development side. Okay, so um, let's start with some basics. Um, normally, when you're trying to figure out how to raise a certain amount, you don't plan on everyone giving an equal amount. That's, uh, it's much more common to have a pyramid where there's a very small number of people giving much larger donations and a lot of people giving uh, small donations. And um, so you need to segment your uh, donors and approach them differently in order to get the different types of gifts. Here is a, a different view. Um, and you'll notice that down at the bottom here, donor acquisition programs or prospecting um, and even the ongoing annual support, um, they are the greatest resource consumption. And um, in fact, often the uh, donor acquisition programs, you're happy if you just break even on them. Um, and yet up here, once you get um, people who are major gift donors and life gifts, um, it takes a long time to um, develop those people, those donors, but you can uh, raise large amounts of money with relatively few resources being expended. Um, so this is um, not so much a, a, um, uh, an internet model for small donation giving. It's um, uh, a traditional donor uh, pyramid. And often you'll find that you'll have some internet donation programs which um, try and get a large number of small donations. And they can be quite profitable because you don't have to spend as much on the net. Um, so here's a, a different version of a <laughs> Uh, donor pyramid, and there's more techniques here. So capital campaigns for a new building. Um, here are some uh, ways to get first time giving in a park program. Um, and there's lots of different uh, programs and techniques. Um, you start uh, just by um, developing a, a relationship um, with your clients or your um, supporters and then gradually um, move up to other uh, levels. So here uh, I threw on the idea of a, a pyramid, and I'm talking now about the type of communication that you're having. This is a little bit of uh, um, famous Canadian Marshall McLuhan, warm or cool communications. And so cooler communications, you're not having that uh, um, strong personal connection and warmer ones it's much more of a human relationship and so down here at the bottom um, you know we start with very impersonal ones um, I'm going to talk a bit about a, a robocall um, integration that we've uh, recently developed it's in alpha um, direct mail um, a lot of us who do software um, kind of say oh that's old school you know don't worry about it it actually still raises a lot more money than online uh, in Canada and the US uh, for uh, certain types of uh, donors. It's uh, worth a lot of money to a lot of uh, organizations. Personal emails. Uh, this isn't so much just a personalized bulk email, but um, where you may be reaching out to someone because of uh, an interaction with them. Uh, you saw them at an event, and you're following up. Uh, same with phone calls. There's a, a difference between 
um, the kind of call you'd make on a call center call where you're going through a script and the kind of call you do uh, after you've received a donation for a, a major gift. Um, the uh, scripts that you use, I should mention that um, came up a little bit in the last session. Um, you can prompt uh, the response that you want by reminding people of something nice that your organization has done or your candidate has done. And it's been shown that giving those cues is going to um, encourage people to say yes to your appeal that time. But having said yes this time, they're actually committed to it and they'll remember that they said yes. Um, so you have to be very careful and put some effort into your scripts. Foot canvassing, um, maybe it's a Canadian term. It's where you move uh, either up and down a street, knocking on every door during an election, or more commonly these days, you'll have a, a walk list of members or donors, and you go back to them. It's often a good idea to use the same um, channel for communication to renew that you manage to get the first give, the gift. Um, so uh, up here, um, it's really good to um, know a fair bit about the interests and family and have a relationship with anyone that you're thinking of uh, asking for a major gift. And a major gift might be for some small organizations, it might be $1,000, might be 10,000, it could be you know, five or 10 million for um, a university. Um, it's um, possible these days to use um, social media to do a fair bit of uh, research on potential major donors. Um, there's also a lot of uh, products you can use um, that will um, provide information on philanthropists and uh, philanthropic foundations, personal foundations. Um, once you get up to major gifts, you're going to be setting up uh, things like a personal visit, um, having dinner with the chair of your organization, things like that. So that's a very warm, uh, intimate kind of uh, communication. So um, here's a little bit uh, of a different take on it. Um, here I've tried to talk about face-to-face -face events aren't only fundraisers in their own um, uh, right, but they're also a way of developing a relationship. And if you want to move people from uh, first-time donors to making second and more donations to recurring annual donors, um, it's important to try and get them out and to use volunteering and other sorts of engagement techniques to increase their level of uh, uh, commitment to your organization. Um, you have to make this fun and meaningful. Um, over on this side, um, just in terms of tools in Civi CRM, with a little bit of customization, you can um, try to set the um, amounts on a page where people are landing to an appropriate amount uh, given the donor's history. And you can often uh, significantly change how much you get overall in a campaign. Um, and direct mail is the traditional uh, experts in this area with A-B testing. Um, we're hopefully going to be doing more A-B testing shortly. Um, Civi CRM also allows you to segment on uh, what um, is a common uh, refrain in development, which is recency, frequency, and M is money, but the amount of uh, a gift or the cumulative amount of the gift. Okay, so in terms of techniques for uh, communicating, um, social media is um, important. Um, here's a traditional, uh, you know, maybe five years ago, uh, take on how you can use the social web. Um, so you can see giving money, time, trying to get contacts from them, um, and these all go together. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about an integration with a new type of tool called Attentively. And um, I was uh, quite interested in Attentively. Uh, I was comparing it to other uh, products like Hootsuite, um, which are more um, broadcast models for social media integration. Attentively actually focuses on your existing contacts. And so instead of finding, for example, 
uh, what's trending on the web right now, you find what's trending in your own set of contacts. And it will search all of their posts to find out what terms they're using. So often you'll want um, to have a hook with what's trending if you're going to put out some sort of message of the day, message of the week. Um, so what are some of the um, uh, features of Attentively and the plugin we've developed for it? So um, it's, uh, the plugin sends all of the um, emails in your database over to Attentively, and then Attentively, over the course of several days or a week, and continuing for months afterwards, will search um, over 100 different social media properties like LinkedIn and Facebook and Twitter uh, to find matching accounts for that email. Um, once it gets them, we pull it back into uh, Civi CRM and, uh, so you can find which people have which types of accounts. Um, also, uh, it pulls in the Clout score. So Clout um, has their own proprietary magic formula for just determining the influence of someone on the social web. And they do that by seeing how many people are following them, how many people are retweeting them, and so on. There's one or two other ones which are similar, um, but Clout is a, a pretty good one. And so um, knowing which of your um, uh, stakeholders or supporters have a high Clout score helps you determine which ones you want to target for personalized engagement and outreach. Um, and so you might want to um, send a personal email to them saying, we're going to be releasing this report, just wanted to give you a heads up because um, we think you might be interested based on what you've done in the past. Um, we're also able to pull in um, pictures of uh, the person, and that's nice when you want to be able to remember who they are coming up for a fundraising dinner or whatever. Um, so it just pulls them in and puts the um, image or picture that's available uh, into their um, um, contact summary page. Um, if, uh, so it's a fire hose, <laughs> the social net, and there's way too much uh, going on there. And so we don't want to capture everything that all of your contacts have ever said on any of their social media properties. It's just way too much content. Um, so instead, um, what we suggest is that you identify terms or tags of um, things that are going to be relevant to you, to your campaigns. Your campaigns are probably already um, using particular hashtags. You've probably got something for your organization. So those are the search terms you should use. And um, the plugin will send those terms over to Attentively. Attentively will do the searches and then pull those posts back over to Civi CRM. Um, I'm not going to go into all the um, amazing and uh, uh, growing set of wonderful things that Attentively does once you click over to its side. I'm talking more about the integration, but um, it does allow you to set up automated actions. So for example, if there's a mention of your tags, you can retweet that automatically. Be a little careful because it might be a negative one. <laughs> um, and it will also do other things like make recommendations for what you should do when someone um, uh, mentions one of your terms, for example. All right, so let's do a um, little bit of a demo here. This is um, currently whoops, in beta. Um, let me, uh, sorry, let me switch over. Okay, so um, unfortunately I don't have a lot of data in this site I just put together. So here is where um, it will provide your clout score, which is a score from 0 to 100. Generally if it's over 40, you're um, somewhat influential. Here this will provide um, all the networks that have been found for a particular contact. So if I had set the, up this demo site a couple days ago, then it would show four or five for me. I didn't realize it, but I once had a MySpace account or something like that, and so it finds these old accounts that I've forgotten about. Tungle. I once had a Tungle account. And um, these are going to be uh, the posts. You can set in um, a little configuration uh, area the number of days 
uh, that you want the post to come for, maybe seven days, maybe 30. Um, you can uh, adjust that. Um, there is, uh, as well, under advanced search, the ability to use this information um, to um, either uh, you know, pull the people who are influencers or um, include or exclude people by their social media accounts. OK, um, let's go over to, um, attentively, oh, sorry, this is, so this is one of my beta clients. Um, so um, on each of the contacts, you can go directly over to attentively and get directly onto the contact page over there, their full contact page. Um, let me sign in here. Um, so here's, uh, I don't really have enough time to go over this properly, but um, it shows that for this um, group, they have about uh, 8,000 contacts. I think about four or 5,000 of them have matched social media accounts. And um, so, oh, actually only um, 1,000 of them have matched. Uh, I think this is an old database. Um, and this is their reach. Um, and so we don't have much in the way of interesting terms that they're searching for. Um, they haven't been using it much yet. Um, here, this is a, a, a system that's being used for recruitment for a women's uh, college in Canada. It's the only women's college. And so um, nice terms like these are trending amongst them. And uh, here are the hashtags. Um, so. Uh, here's a particular user. Let's try looking at her. So she's got a low cloud score, 66 posts, um, fairly high number of connections, and these are the networks that she's on. Um, and from here, you can start following her. You can add her to various sorts of groups that you can do things with. The groups get synced back to Civi CRM. Um, and here are the topics she likes to post on. Um, you can also um, um, I don't think we've got any recommendations set up, but you can set up rules for different things. Um, let's go back to the dashboard. Um, and what other things do I want to show? Um, I think I'll leave it at that for now, and we'll come back later at a different point. OK. Um, whoops. Okay, the next one I wanted to talk about was um, uh, voice communication. So, uh, Civi CRM right now has a Civi Survey, which can be used um, either uh, for people sitting at a phone and um, just going through and using it directly. Uh, there's no current integration with uh, voice over IP providers. Uh, I'm hoping that we might get that. Um, here is a, a typical type of campaign office that I've been in. In the basement, usually, there's a phone bank set up with a lot of volunteers. Um, it used to be thought that volunteers weren't as good, but Obama's campaign found that they were actually doing better uh, than the paid uh, call center staff. Um, and uh, a little less professional and more real, I guess. Um, so um, backing down a bit from that level uh, in terms of warmth is a robocall. Um, they have a bad name because they were getting used um, a bit excessively. Um, there are some uses that I think are still good and others are a bit more problematic. I would say that some good uses are um, to call people uh, to uh, let them know about an upcoming event, um, to um, make it one part of a drip campaign where you're um, trying to do several different uh, interactions with them in order to get them to make a donation, come out to vote, or uh, potentially some other action. So in terms of this integration, um, we did it with a, a low-cost provider, Plivo, um, 
and we're expecting others uh, with, uh, for example, Twilio, and there's a Google Summer of uh, Code project for um, an open source product called FreeSwitch. So currently, it's you know uh, not doing too much. For every call, it does say whether it was um, not answered, whether an answering machine answered it, whether it did get picked up, um, whether it was uh, not in service. Um, and then the call duration. For um, robocalls, it's really important to uh, note how long the call was because some people hang up right away. <laughs> and uh, that helps you determine what part of your script is no good and also how badly you're doing in getting your message out. Um, if you get people to last right until the end of your 50 or 60 second message, you're doing really well. Um, and uh, so that's um, an important feedback mechanism for reporting. Um, and then also uh, the cost of each of these calls. We hope to continue to develop uh, voice over IP functionality with Civi CRM and uh, in the Google Solver Code project, an easy win, I think, is click to call. So any phone number in uh, the interface, you'll be able to click on it and either use your um, existing mic that you use for Skype or whatever and have it go out to uh, the public network, POTS, plain old telephone system. Um, eventually, I'd also like to um, integrate uh, interactive voice response. So that's where people can answer questions using um, their touchpad. The um, uh, integration I'd like to see there is to have a subset of Civi Survey. Um, so certain types of questions there uh, would be able to be sent out through a, um, uh, uh, a voice uh, interface. One that um, I think is more challenging but is um, uh, really, really effective in terms of the um, cost is to change from uh, just having your phoners dial on their own and having, you know, wait until they find out if anyone's going to answer or get an answering machine and instead use what's called predictive dialing. And in that case, the um, system will phone quite a large number of people and it will know based on your uh, five or ten phoners when they are likely to be hanging up and it will try and queue up a call for them so that very shortly after they hang up they'll be able to take a new call. So it means that your phoners are two to four times more productive. Okay, I'm having trouble with um, a name for this. Um, anyway, I'll ask you about that in a moment. Let me just do a, a small demo. Okay, so it's, um, it's based on the uh, 4.5 interface for CiviMail, and we'll probably upgrade it to the um, 4.6 interface, which is much nicer. Um, so you give it a name. Um, I don't know. I'm not feeling very great. And you get to include groups or not. Um, and... Um, and then you can exclude them if you want. Then you can decide whether to track all of these uh, things I was mentioning earlier or not. Here, um, you select the contact. This is alpha still, so there's some labels that need to be improved um, that will be used as the outgoing caller. And so people will see a certain phone number or maybe even their um, name, and um, the calls will be recorded in Civi as coming from that contact. Um, you can click to record directly. I don't suggest that. Um, you want to be a little more professional. Um, so I just got some little uh, WAV file here. Um, um, here you would do a test, just like the Civi mail. Make sure everything sounds good. Um, this will, instead of, say, preview mailing, we want to allow you to listen to it again. Um, and then um, you'll be able to schedule it. So what's going to happen is, um, in the same way that um, Civi Mail, when you're using a uh, third-party email 
uh, delivery system. It just sends it all out, and then the external system over in Plyvo does a lot of the um, actual work. So most of the processing is over there. Is there a question? No? Okay. So uh, I was going to demo it, but I haven't had my phone working um, all week because I'm from Canada, and for some reason my um, account wasn't working this time. So here we go. Um, in terms of other um, types of uh, interactions, I think a, a really um, effective one is door-to-door. -door. I mentioned it earlier. In Civi CRM, there are some um, features that I would suggest are useful here. Um, we used to have Civi Mobile. Hopefully, within about a year, we'll have responsive design that will allow any page to render nicely on a little um, handheld device. Right now, I think it's nice to have uh, something about an iPad size, um, which have uh, phone uh, connections. And then from that, you can go around and you can actually customize the pages that are going to be used to record responses and do that at the door. Um, or you might want to actually take uh, credit card donations at the door as well. To move uh, a little bit higher up the donation um, pyramid, um, talking about major gift fundraising, so just to go back to the um, pyramid. So here we're, we're moving from, um, here we're, you know, initial donations, ad hoc donations, annual giving, um, major annual donors, and then moving them up into here. They might do some things like sponsor um, or buy tables for your events here. And then a major gift, um, they're, they're going to be doing a lot more for you. And so here's where you probably want not uh, to have a, uh, a planning document, not for a whole segment, but starting to have it for an individual. So you need to identify through segmentation. Then you need to cultivate them. You probably want to have them do volunteer work, um, probably be on your board, things like that. And, um, and then uh, with uh, a lot of forethought, you have a solicitation um, call. This is probably boring for some of you and uh, um, new for others. And then after you have the gift, um, and even if you don't get a gift, you want to steward them. So. Um, Civi CRM and attentively um, can be quite good at the segmentation. Uh, we've got a lot of different things for cultivating and the solicitation. You can plan that. You can decide who's going to do the solicitation. Normally, you um, would have a board member, I was mentioning. You also might want to find out who is in their social network that is also a supporter of yours in order to have someone make the ask that they'll have a hard time saying no to. Um, so in terms of the research, um, how am I doing for time here? Um, I would just say that having the LinkedIn profile and the social media profiles allows you to find out what interests you might not know about them uh, that would be useful in cultivating the relationship and um, find out things like who on your board is um, on other boards, potentially including donors. So here, this is a little picture uh, of a friend making a nice ask. And um, if you have a capital campaign or something, you want to uh, bring those people in, let them see what their money can do, will be doing. So thank you very much.